What's up? Hey, my name is Valerian, and today we're going to speak about RAG, and we're going to build a very, very simple NA10 based AI agent that will serve as a chatbot on your company website and will respond to your users' requests. Just as we have it here on our website, I can check it here. So let's say I ask hi, and it will ask me for an email. I will tell it my email and my name. All right, now how can I assist you? I What's the pricing? Hmm, let's see if it knows the pricing. I hope so. All right, it knows the pricing. Well, uh, let's ask and uh, can you help me with Airtable automation? All right, yes, we can. And it will offer you to schedule a discovery call. So that's, that's basically what we're building today. So RAG is a retrieval augmented generation or basically it is adding additional knowledge base to the LLM model that you use and make sure that this LLM model actually requests data from that additional data source every time it needs this data to provide the response. So by default, ChatGPT or Claude, they don't know anything about your business or they might know something, but not the internal stuff that you want them to know. They don't know anything about your products, about the details of a specific customer, about the shipment that you've sent to this customer or about the services that you already provide to this customer. So all things like that, they should be covered by one, one of the ways to cover them and to address them is having the RAG system that is based on the internal data sources that your team has. So today we're going to build it very simple and automation. Here I'm showing the current automation that works on our website, but this block over here, we're not going to build it today. It is actually responsible for sending the Slack follow-up transcripts of the chats from the website so we don't lose those. But in our case, we'll just cover this simple block here. Let's start with a new blank workflow here. We'll start with a chat trigger. So the chat trigger is a built-in trigger in NA10 and uh, you can make it publicly available. And a few, one, one actually one, just one option that we need is to add the course or allowed domains. You can just leave it with an asterisk here, but it's important to add. Otherwise it's just won't load on your website. So now we have the chat trigger here. We're going to add the AI agent node over here. What is an AI agent here? Uh, it is a node that has three things connected. The first one is going to be the chat model. The second one is the memory. And the third one is the tools. The chat model is the only mandatory field. And we're going to go with OpenAI model. If you don't have OpenAI already, connected to your NA10 instance, you will need to do so. It is very straightforward. I'll probably record a video about this one, but you need to go through this small, simple process and, and add the API key in here. After that, you're going to see something similar, and then you will need to select the, mo select the model from the list of available models. I would recommend as of today, uh, like summer to 2025, I would recommend going with GPT-40 mini for a project like this. Now we have the model attached, uh, the memory part. For our production ready chat, we are using the Postgres memory, but to make it simple for the purpose of this video, we will add a simple memory node and simple memory basically allows the chat, the AI agent to remember the context for the N, N interactions that you specify here. Let's say five, I think, from my experience, is not enough for a chatbot. Let's put 30 in here. So you make sure that your model remembers 30 previous messages that the client sent. And uh, this makes the con it more, more context aware. So it doesn't forget that your user asked about a specific product 10 messages ago. So the response will be relevant, more relevant, rather than without that memory node in here. And finally, the tools. The tools that the AI agent uses can be anything from 
retrieval tools, let's say scraping the search engine or making a request to, um, to the database or something else, to actually the tools that are sending data or making some actions. It can be an email tool that sends an email or it can be a calendar tool that makes a booking or a Slack messaging. So whatever you can think of can actually be a tool that the agent can use. I mean, you can even generate an image based on the input that the user provides. But in our case, a tool will be one specific tool. We're going to use Pinecone Assistant. What is Pinecone? Pinecone is a vector database. It's basically a rag system that also has a thing called assistance. So it's not a raw vector database. It is already the database powered by the model. In our case, we're going to create a new assistant in here. And it, it, this is how it looks like. You can basically drag and drop files to this space to save them to the vector database that the assistant will be working with. Pinecone is not the only way of doing this, obviously, and you can use other vector databases. You can use Superbase, you can use Lightrag, you can use multiple available tools. This is the most simple approach that I can think of, so it should be very easy to understand even for non-technical people. So I have this PDF that I prepared. It describes my agency services. It is just a four page PDF. It ha has some sections uh, like about the agency pricing, tools that we work with, the process, the founder and how to get started, including some links. I'm just dropping it over here, click import and need to wait for it to process. Right, now it has been processed. Let's try and ask what's the pricing and see if it knows something about the pricing. All right, yeah, it knows something, so it is enough. Now we need to add it over here. By default, you wouldn't find a node that connects you with a Pinecone agent, uh, assistant, so we need to create a custom node. It's very simple. Let's go to Pinecone docs over here. We'll switch to the assistant documentation and we'll find the API. On this API page we need to go here, find chat with an assistant and here on the right side you will find an example. We need the CRL default example and basically I'm just going to copy the things that I need from this example. So first of all I'm going to copy the URL over here. Here I'm going to add an HTTP node, HTTP request node. I need to choose post over here. For the URL, I'm adding this URL and I'm replacing this last part. As you can see, there is a, a variable here, the assistant name. I need to take the assistant name from this list of assistants that I have and put it in here. For the authentication, I need to use the generic auth type with the header auth and I will create the new credentials. To do so, I need to create an API key on the Pinecone side. Let's create one. All right. It is only shown once, so make sure you copy it. You add it here. You can see that the authentication is happening just with this param, API key. So we just need to copy this exactly API key like api-key and add this value of the key itself over here. Click Save. And then we need to make sure that we add the headers. So we need to click Send Headers and add, if you can see, dash H means that it's a header. So there's another header over here. It's the content type, JSON. Okay, and now we, we will also need to send body. Here is the body of this request. We click send body, we change this, uh, we leave the JSON, but we change to specify body using JSON. And here we add the body. 
and the only thing we need to change here is basically the content because we don't want the content to be the placeholder content that we have in the documentation we will change the type of this field to expression so we can use dynamic data and what we're going to use is we're going to use the from AI function so here is how it looks like you need to make sure you start and end with these double brackets and then the from AI contains several params the first one is the name of the variable that you are sending the second one actually gives the context to the AI agent what is exactly this variable responsible for and then you have the type which is not mandatory and also you have the default value which is also not mandatory we don't have it in here so you can just copy this and paste it in here and now this should be good to go uh, we need to re rename this for the clarity for the tool so let's call it pinecone assistant and also here we will make the description clear okay now we'll go to the AI agent so an interesting thing about this agent is that since we have only one tool we don't even have any specific prompt in here as you can see we don't have any system message yet but it will already use this tool so if I ask it what's the pricing it will actually go to pinecone and it will retrieve the pricing information from here and uh, it will output it I, I think so in, in a minute yeah so it, it will actually tell you the pricing so the thing is that we still need to specify the prompt because we want it to behave in a stable way and also what I really don't like here for example pinecone returns me the link to this full service documentation I don't really need it here and uh, uh, this is an this can be an internal document right so I don't want it to be here so let's try and add a simple prompt that will help us to do so you go to the AI agent node you select system message and here's where you actually add the prompt you will see people adding large huge prompts but you need to be aware that every prompt basically eats up the tokens so the more simple it is the easier it is to maintain and if it does the job you don't need to overcomplicate it but in our case okay we can leave this your helpful assistant you can use uh, these tools um, you need to copy paste the name of the tool here uh, send requests anytime you don't know the response yourself so most probably that simple questions don't need a response based on the internal documentation the LLM the modern LLM like OpenAI GPT 4.0 can respond it uh, to such questions by itself uh, next remove all external links if the domain is not to be automation AI or Calendly and there was a an error in the prompt itself so I changed it and uh, specified that first of all remove external links from the output uh, uh, if the domain is not to be automation AI or Calendly com and now it works there was first of all it said remove all external links so it just didn't go any further it just removed all the external links and then for Calendly I also haven't added the dot com um, part so it just didn't realize this is the domain so now if I'm asking for the link for the link it will provide me with the link to the calendar page which is correct so finally uh, what we need to do is to deploy this chat to our website how to do this you can just Google na10 chat na10 chat find this npm package over here to simply deploy it you can find this CDN example and with the CD, CDN example you just copy the whole block of code over here you paste it into your HTML of your website I would prefer doing this in the footer area before the closing body tag and you replace this webhook URL 
with the webhook URL from this node over here. So you copy it and you put it in here. That's it. As soon as you do it, and if you set up everything correctly, you will see this kind of chat bot over here and it's gonna work. Um, common issue that I've seen is that there is no input area in this chat bot. And this means there is something wrong with the configuration of the chat node over here. Most probably it is related to course. So make sure, start with an asterisk here. Don't add the domains over here because you might add them wrong. You might miss the uh, protocol. You might miss the www or something else. Just start with an asterisk, make sure that it works and then add the domains. Also, if you are using uh, the response that is based on the webhook, make sure you have this webhook respond node over here because if you don't have it, it's also not going to work. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next episodes.